Does the Bible say anything about laziness? Let's take a look. I'm Zach. This is The Average Christian. It's a project about helping people understand what it means to have a relationship with God and how do I live that out in practical terms. Please do me a quick favor. If these videos are helping you and you enjoy them, you like them, go down and click that like button. It helps get the word out. It helps YouTube to, what's that word I'm looking for, to, to actually suggest these videos. So hit the like button if it helps. All right, let's go to Proverbs. Proverbs chapter 10 to begin with. And notice at least four aspects of uh, laziness here dealt with. And then we'll apply this spiritually because it does affect us in daily life. And if you're wondering why things are going wrong, it could be that this is one of the problems. He says a slack hand in uh, chapter 10 and verse 4, a slack hand causes poverty. But the hand of the diligent makes rich. So if you stay busy, then you're going to do well. You're going to succeed. It doesn't necessarily mean you're always going to be rich. And rich is a... um, nondescript terms sometimes depending on your culture and so forth. But if you're lazy, that slack hand causes us poverty. Uh, The hand of the diligent makes rich. He says, he who gathers in summer is a prudent son, but he who sleeps in harvest is a son who brings shame. So there's a time to do things. And if I waste that time and waste those opportunities, I shouldn't be shocked when things don't go well, when I miss out on these opportunities. And how many of us know this feeling of where we know We should have done X, Y, and Z, and we didn't, and now we're uh, suffering the repercussions of it. So it just tells you and me here to be diligent, to be active, to be about our business when the time is right, and to make use of that time sounds a lot like redeeming the time in Ephesians chapter 5. So that's one aspect of dealing with laziness. Here's another one, chapter 6 and verse 9. How long will you lie there, O sluggard? When will you arise from your sleep? It's not necessarily just sleeping. It's funny, the Bible doesn't seem to put a high premium on sleep. I know we need to have this, we need to have that so we can function. It's amazing what our military personnel can do without sleep. It's amazing how they train in order to be able to function coherently without sleep. And here God is saying, you know, how long are we going to lie there? How long are we going to sleep? How long are we going to waste by, what, watching YouTube videos (laughs) that are unproductive by watching, you know, Netflix or TikTok or whatever the case is, wasting our time with gaming, wasting our time with anything. How long are we going to lie there? So he's asking us, and when will we wake up from our sleep? Now, notice this is what we'll say to ourselves. A little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest. See, that sounds logical, right? I'm just going to take a little time for myself. I'm going to lay back here. Hey, I've worked all day, so I need my time to unwind. Or hey, I've been really busy this week, and so I need a day off, or I need a vacation. We're constantly talking about this, and we just need a break. Or we'll tell other people that. We see them working hard, diligently working. We'll say, wow, you really need to slow down. You need a break. So he says, a little sleep, a little slumber, a little folding of the hands to rest, and poverty will come upon you like a robber. You understand that? Like, what happened? Where did my time go? How am I this late in getting this accomplished and getting this done? And and so it's kind of like with with money the same way. If you don't budget your money, you end up looking at the end of the check and going, or the end of the month or whatever, and going, what happened to all of it? Because we didn't pay attention and we were just kind of using it aimlessly. Time goes the same way. Poverty will come upon you like a robber and want like an armed man. He says in chapter 13 in verse 4, the soul of the sluggard craves and gets nothing. How many of us are lazy? We don't want to put in the work. We want the reward. We want the end goal. And so we're always, not just in America, but in as human beings, we're always looking for the shortest, the easiest route because we want that end, uh, the ends basically. But we, we, we don't want the means. And so we want to skip or we want to go around. So Those who are lazy have that craving and then get absolutely nothing while the soul of the diligent is richly supplied. I think you and I will understand as humans, if we will put our hands to work, we'll probably want less and less. We'll be so focused or more focused on what we're accomplishing and what we're doing and what we're about. We won't have time to sit and wish our lives away and daydream and so forth. Moving on, one more passage here in Proverbs chapter 12 and verse 24. Notice this, the hand of the diligent will rule while the slothful will be put to forced labor. 
If you want to take charge of your life, then be diligent, be active, use your time wisely. That's what we're talking about here, this commodity of time, using my opportunity, using my abilities. We think about the the five and the two talent men who doubled what they were given because they used their resources properly. So those will rule, usually rule their own lives. And a lot of times you hear people who are lazy or, as this verse says, slothful, complaining and talking like victims, like it's somebody else's fault or it's the system's fault or it's society's fault or their upbringing or whatever else. Instead of taking ownership and responsibility, the slothful would be put to forced labor. And I'm sure complain about that, too. If you don't want to be subservient to someone else or feel like your life is living you, then take control of it. The Bible is instructing us here to, again, be diligent. Now, how does this work as far as spiritually speaking? Well, you're wondering why things are going wrong in your life and why uh, you don't have this spiritual connection with God. It's probably because you've been a sluggard when it comes to your spiritual life. You've wasted time and you've wasted opportunities You can't seem to be motivated to read your Bible, motivated to pray to God, and all these opportunities, This our God waiting on you constantly to talk to him, waiting on you to listen to him, but you've got better things to do. You need to unwind, and so you don't unwind by reading scripture and learning and growing. You don't use that as your uh, free time, so to speak, and we're suffering as a result spiritually in our society because we are yet the busiest, seemingly the busiest people in the world and spiritually bankrupt. And it's because we've been sluggards when it comes to our spiritual lives. We have not enough time to worship. We have not enough time to have family devotionals, not enough time to build myself up for the Lord and my diligence just goes to waste. And I know some of the hardest working people in the world who are spiritually bankrupt and don't apply this in their lives in a godly sense. So I hope this helps you. I hope this makes you think, and I hope it gives you at least a a basis for how the Bible deals with laziness. There's other verses we could have gone to, and maybe it will motivate you. When I read this, I I feel a sense of guilt at times. I, I also see how important it is for me to use all of my opportunities and all of my resources that God has given me to the best of my ability and do that day to day. We want to thank you for being with us today. If you're watching on YouTube and you haven't already, you can click this button here to subscribe to the channel. Please, again, hit the like button if this video helped. Also, over here are some suggestions from YouTube. One's a suggestion from YouTube. One is the last video that was released. If you're listening to us on podcast, thank you for being with us. Please subscribe, rate, and review. Once again, it helps get the word out. The reason we want the word to get out is not to grow a channel, not to grow a podcast, but so we can help more people So consider sharing the video as well.